Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another special interview episode of the Awesome 80s Podcast. This is Michael. This is Lawrence. Hi, Michael. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. So, uh, MF Jones, our producer, is not on site because he has a life, and because of that, we have had some horrible technical difficulties, but thankfully, he's available by phone, and we are here, and we have a very special guest. So, good afternoon, Joyce. Hi. Hi. That's Joyce's cell phone, everybody. Yeah, I'm How are you doing today? I'm, I, I'm literally, I, I'm in, in a couple of days, I'm throwing an event for like 1,500 to 2,000 oh, wow. people, so it's oh. going to be like this nonstop, so. Um, well, we appreciate you taking the time here, and uh, we want to also talk about your, the charity that I'm assuming you're throwing that event for, is that yeah. correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, we'll talk briefly a little about your career, and then we will uh, save some time, because uh, I've watched your videos, I've read up on your charity, it's an awesome cause. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, uh, I'm Michael, that was Lawrence, Lawrence is the talker of the group, uh, so <laughs> you're... Uh, oh my gosh. The thing, they, they all happen, it all happens at one point, I mean, it all happens at... It all happens at once, I guess. So, what are you going to do? Um, what do you do? I'm sorry. That's, that's uh, you're going a... in and out too, so oh, I, I'm just, I'm going to do my best to hang okay, in here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hi, Michael. Hi. How are you? Um, so, uh, when did you first start acting? When did this? When did you catch the bug? Uh, really, when I was very young. Um, I used to be a ballet dancer, actually, oh, wow. and, uh, and then I hurt my knee when I was about I don't know, about 15 15 and a half and uh, pretty much this was like kind of before they had that orthoscopic surgery because you know I'm old and um, it just was, it was too messed up so I decided I was going to stop dancing and then uh, it was just kind of like I, I was so driven at such a young age that I just felt like at that point I really had to decide um, what I was going to do with my life at the tender age of sixteen, okay. <laughs> and uh, that's that was that was about the time that I started. And then you were also in Staying Alive, the Sylvester Stallone fant- phantasm film. That's, yep. Yes, I was. It, it is. Yeah. It's a great movie in a lot of different ways. It's a horrible movie, but great. But we love it. Yeah, I think it's a great movie. I think it's good. <laughs> he was great to work with. Actually, I love Sly. He was. He was. He's a really sweet guy. I don't know how much the crew loved him, but um, he was really good to me. So uh, I, I haven't seen it forever. What was your role in it? I'm sorry. I don't remember either. Okay. <laughs> 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 You think I'm kidding? <laughs> um, God, you know what? I, I I think honestly, I was just a girl that uh, I, I'm, that um, John Travolta picks up in a bar. Okay. I, I honestly think that's what it was. It was a it was a little featured role. I think it was only like my second movie, so um, uh, it was it was not a large part. <laughs> Silly him. He made a big mistake. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I mean, because I got so huge. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so was your family in theater, or were they? Did they? Were they okay with you making the decision to do this? Uh oh yeah. Uh, you know, um, nobody. I mean, my dad is. Um, you know, I, I know he wishes that he was, and he he produces shows for his temple. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, no, actually, I'm I'm really the first in my family. I don't know. I have no idea what happened. I just it's like the first in my family. Honestly, the first of like everybody I knew growing up. I, I think pretty much almost everybody I know growing up um, is still there in Philadelphia. And um, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess uh, 
I, we were kind of seeking you out to be on this podcast because I think it was our first or our second podcast like six years ago. We did just one of the guys. It is like the movie that we champion, like the one we get extras on DVDs and send out to people in the mail just so they can know why we love 80s movies so much. Um, do you have any funny, awesome stories from just one of the guys? You know, it's great. I, we literally we just had a 30-year um, a reunion oh. um, out here in Los Angeles, and um, it was actually the first time that I've seen Billy, um, my, who played my brother. It was the first time I'd seen him in 30 years. Um, and, um, and, you know, Tony I've run into a few times, but, you know, there was just, like, it was really a- absolutely, it was a blast. Making the movie was really, I mean, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And, um, uh, you know, great stories. Okay, let's see. Well, you know, getting strapped down every single day and <laughs> um, in a bodysuit, and they used to have to take, I don't know if you know what sea breeze is. Do you, do you know that it's a like an antiseptic or something like a menthol oh, i think my wife has used it before like on her face to get makeup off yeah of yeah like an astringent yeah. yes um they used to take bottles and bottles of sea breeze and pour it into a bucket of ice water um because this thing that i had to wear was thick and it was hot and it was we were shooting and we shot the the film in scottsdale arizona and um they literally used to have to like come and like pour this stuff down my bodysuit, so I would like walk around soaking wet. And not that that's really very funny, but um, it was it was uh, it was really uncomfortable. It was definitely uncomfortable. So between the bodysuit and the wig, I was miserable. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, so what was it like working with Billy? You talking? <laughs> <laughs> so, really helping for some help here. Yeah, like, um, <laughs> the, uh, I guess for me though, the the brother, the little brother, buddy, play, guy played by is it Billy Jane? Is that how you pronounce his name? He's he's yeah, just, Billy. he's fantastic. He seemed like so much fun. It felt like it felt like almost improv to a certain extent, but just like him doing his, you know, like him doing the show as the little brother was just made the movie for me. Was was, it, was he fun to work with? Thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I mean, you made the movie too. I'm sorry. Um, I'm right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like that, uh, that, like the dynamic between you and him, like you'd go to a, like in the movie, you go to school, you deal with all this stuff, and you're like, great, now I gotta go deal with my brother too. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I also saw the, the the movie for the first time in 30 years, um, and I have to say that. You know, although it is very 80s, it still kind of holds up. And what I was most impressed with, uh, one of the things that I was most impressed with really was the relationship between me and Billy. And, um, I mean, it's just like our chemistry was... I mean, it, it was amazing, actually. It, he was, yes, he was a ton of fun, and, and uh, we just, we used to have a blast. My my ha- my room, I was the only person who had a suite, um, and so my room was the hangout room, so everybody would come to my room, and we would rehearse and, and hang out and have a good time, and, and I will never forget one day. I, I think Billy was 15 when we we made the movie. Pretty sure he was 15 and um i remember one day we were hanging out and <laughs> we were he was like laying back on my bed and he kind of had his hands back you know behind his head like this and uh he looks at me and he goes have you ever been with a younger guy <laughs> and um and i looked at him and i said uh no actually i haven't and he said well aren't you curious that's awesome. That was one of my favorite stories from just one of the guys. That's awesome. Um, I, I don't want to keep you too long. You got to get going. I was wondering if you could talk about uh, the nonprofit you're involved with. Um, yeah, it's the Harold Robinson Foundation, and it is a basically we started out bringing inner city schools. Uh, up to a camp in the Angeles forest uh, for three day retreats. And what we discovered and what we were, we were doing there is we're, you know, teaching leadership skills and, you know, sort of bringing com- the 
the kids together and and um, showing them, you know, something. I mean, most of these kids live in the middle of the city. They live in cement jungles. Yeah. I mean, they they they've never seen. You know, they've never rolled down a grass hill. They've never seen mountains. They've. Ne- I mean, it's just it's crazy. So we we bring them to this amazing place and we do all these activities that um, sort of build team building exercises that are all basically kind of a metaphor for life and challenges and obstacles that they'll meet along the way. And when we first started it, we, we, I mean, we were having great success. The kids were loving it, but you know, we realized that, you know, we spend this time with these kids, they leave, you know, they, they're together, they're bonded, but then they're going back to the same, there's the same community, the same stress, the same everything. So what we decided we were going to do is that we were going to start bringing family members, parents, aunts and uncles, sometimes grandparents, along with school teachers and school administrators. So basically a slice of the community. Um, and we bring them together and we, you know, sort of teach them how to work together and how to communicate in more positive ways. And we do parenting workshops and, um, you know, we teach them yoga and meditation, you know, different ways to channel their energy, different ways to channel their anger and frustration. And um, and we've also developed all these incredible sort of strategic partnerships with other 501c3s because there's, you know, when you're dealing in communities like we we are, there's so many nonprofits that are out there and they're all kind of doing their own thing. And kind of our thing is, is to bring people together and start working together because I think that when we do that, we're much more effective. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of the cliff notes um and this weekend sunday we have our annual event called pedal on the pier at the santa monica pier um where we put about 100 plus spin bikes on the pier and it's a 100 mile ride okay nowhere and uh, everybody raises money so it's really cool we've already raised over six hundred thousand dollars um and uh, we hope to raise more. So if anybody wants to donate, <laughs> they can go to um, the, it's pedalonthepier.com and you just go up to riders and you put in my name, Joyce Heiser Robinson, and click on the page and, and uh, you can donate there. And literally every single dollar counts. So um, I would encourage people. We're doing amazing things. We really are having a tremendous impact in the community, and we hope to grow our model. I and mean, hopefully, we'll be able to raise enough money that we'll be able to start taking our model around the country. I mean, there's inner cities all over the country, especially like if you're from the inner city. Like, when when do you see the stars? Like, when do you see moonlight? You know, and just wonder. You know. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, that's, it's, it's really true. I'm telling you, it is one of the most amazing things when you watch the kids get off the buses and they see, they just, they get off the buses and right when you get off the bus at our camp, they just, there's all these like little, little hills and the kids will just, will be just like rolling it down the hill over and over and over again. And they're just, I, they're so incredibly happy. And, you know, one of the things I'll, I'll say too, like really quickly, we, we um, we are concentrated right now. Although we work in with a lot of uh, different schools in East, in Southeast LA, in South LA, Compton, um, we're focusing on Watts right now. And um, Watts is basically a two mile area, of, and there's there's four housing projects in each area, and all these four housing projects have been at war with each other oh, wow. for over forty years. They've been killing each other for 40 years. Just, you know, and nobody at this point in time, I mean, what is it, 2015, if you ask anybody down there, I mean, there's like, I think something like 12 different gangs in this in this two-mile square radius. And if you ask any one of them why, they, how this whole thing started, nobody's going to ever be able to tell you why. It's complete insanity. So what we're doing, which is crazy and fabulous, is that we are bringing them all together. So we take them out of the community. We put them in this beautiful, like, zen-like place, and we mix everybody up. We mix, up, we mix the kids oh, wow. up. We mix oh, wow. the kids up parents up and it's just like and at first it's nuts you know first day complete craziness and you know there's 
I mean, we've never had like anything horrible happen. Thank God, not on wood. I mean, oh, that's- <laughs> nobody's at the door. Nobody's at the door. <laughs> no, 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 say hi to Charlie. Say hi. Charlie. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, so there, everybody's like, wait, you, I got to go sleep with him. I got to go sleep with her. You know, I mean, it's just, it's like cr- nuts. And then you go and you. They spend this whole day together and everybody eats together and they do all these kind of exercises and games together. And by the end of the weekend, it is, you just, they're, they're together. They're, they're, they can't, it's, I don't know, I've never seen anything like it. It's, I, I have to tell you, it's so powerful and like we say to them, you know, I know when you go back into your community, you might not be able to be best friends with him. You know, you may not be able to go to his house and hang out with him because you can't cross that street over there. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know that this happened here. You know that this guy helped you get over the wall or that he encouraged you to get up, you know, the the wall or to climb on the ropes or whatever it is that you did at camp together. And you guys had fun together. And it's just like, you know, how can you hate him? How could you want to hurt him? Um after you've had this experience and so our hope is that you know we're starting with the kids now and if we continue to work with them that you know we may able to you know have an impact on stopping the cycle of violence yeah Uh, my wife and i we both were camp counselors for a while and it felt like people leave they're like they're like bonded relationships forever and it's just i mean if you could just plant a seed in those people's head just for a little bit um that's exactly yeah yeah, well, I don't want to keep you. Thank you so much for taking time. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. Oh, no, no, no. I, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry. I wish I had more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you seem like you're seem like you doing everything you can. To, so, um, well, this is Michael from the Awesome 80s Podcast. Thank you for, thank you for stopping by. Go! You're still here? No, 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 don't worry about us. We'll be all right. It's over. Should you need us? Yes. Should you need us? For any reason at all. Go home. Get out of here! Can't you see we don't want you anymore? Go.